10.1. What do you see? These are great fun. Let's see if we can work them out. OK. I can see two rabbits. Two? No. That one isn't a rabbit. It looks like a rabbit to me. It's got big ears. No, no, those are horses' ears. That picture's a horse or a seal. Hmm. It might be a horse, but I can't see a seal. But there's definitely a rabbit in this picture. A rabbit and a duck. Yeah, they're easy to see. Now, what about this one? I can see the word good. Good? I can't see good, but I can see evil. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see evil. Oh, yes, now I can. I can see both words now. That's really clever. This drawing's clever too. It looks like four shelves, but there can't be four. Yeah, four or three. It depends how you look at it. And this is another clever drawing. Which one? The one with a parallel bar. Parallel? It doesn't look parallel at all. It looks like a seesaw. It is parallel. I've checked it with a ruler. Wow, amazing. The diagonal lines must be creating the illusion. Yeah, I think you're right. Now, what about the guy with the earring? He could be looking straight at me. On the other hand, he... He might be looking at me. <laughs> and that guy, the soldier, doesn't he look miserable? That's not a soldier. It's someone touching their toes. It must be a soldier. He's wearing a helmet. And he's got his eyes closed. Really? I can't see that at all. But look at the eyes in this one, the skeleton. It looks like something from a horror movie, and it's wearing an earring too. Yeah, this one's really weird. But look more closely. It's not a skeleton, and it's not an earring. It, it just looks like a skeleton. Huh? It's an old-fashioned lady looking at herself in a mirror. No, a lady? It can't be a lady. And what's the earring? I'm not so sure about that. It may be a candlestick. <laughs> well, whatever it is, it's scary. OK, good fun. Is that the lot? 10.2 Fact or Fiction 1. Sunflowers turn to follow the sun. Fiction it's true, there are flowers that follow the sun, but, despite what many people believe, the sunflower is not one of them. Certainly, when you see a field of sunflowers, the flower heads are facing more or less in the same direction, but always in the same direction, from sunrise to sunset. 2. The milk of a hippopotamus is pink. Fact. It is true that the colour of a hippo's milk is bright pink. This is because the milk contains two unique acids, and one of these is red, which, when mixed with the white milk, turns it pink. Hippos nurse their babies for about a year, and are the only mammals to produce pink milk. 3. Salt water boils quicker than fresh water. Fact. Salt water boils faster than pure water because the salt water has a lower heat capacity. In other words, it takes less energy to raise the temperature of salt water than pure water. This means that the salt water heats up faster and gets to its boiling point quicker. 4. A duck's quack doesn't echo. Fiction. This is a much-quoted scientific myth, but it is not true. Scientists have done experiments to prove this. But where did this myth come from? Perhaps it's because quacks aren't usually loud enough to produce an echo. 5. A toilet flush rotates in a different way depending on which hemisphere you are in. Fiction. 
Some people like to believe that the flow of water down the drain in sinks, bathtubs, or toilet bowls changes according to whether you are in the northern or southern hemisphere. This is not true. Drains can flow both clockwise and anti-clockwise in both hemispheres. Six. Hurricanes always have girls' names. Fiction. This used to be true. From 1953 to 1979, only female names were used, but now both men's and women's names are used. One name for each letter of the alphabet. The same lists are reused every six years. These are the first seven names for 2020: Arthur, Bertha, Cristobal, Dolly, Edward, Faye, and Gonzalo. Seven. Elephants can't jump. Fact: Elephants have the same number of bones in their feet as other mammals, but they can't jump. This is because the bones in an elephant's foot are more closely packed together than in other mammals, so they do not have the flexibility that you need to jump. Eight. Too much sugar makes children hyperactive. Fiction. Sugar does not change kids' behaviour. In 1994. A research study proved that a sugary diet did not affect behavior, but sugar does change one important thing: parents' expectations. After hearing that their children have had a lot of sugar, parents are more likely to say their child has become hyperactive, even when the sugar was not really sugar, but only a placebo. Nine. Fish have a three-second memory. Fiction. Scientists have proved that goldfish memory is nowhere near as short as three seconds. They conducted two experiments with fish food, which proved that goldfish can actually remember things for as long as five months. Ten point three. What are they talking about? One. A glass of dry white wine and a mineral water, please. Still or sparkling? Sparkling, please. Do you want ice and lemon with that? Just ice, thanks. How much is that? Two. Ah,、oh, I can't believe it! My screen's frozen again. Switch it off, unplug it, and take the battery out. Then start it up again. That's the only thing that ever works for me. <sighs> okay, here goes. Three. So, how did it go? Not too bad, thanks. Were you very nervous? Yeah, but I tried not to show it. When were you here? In a couple of days. They said they'd phone me at the end of the week and let me know. Four. Have you any idea what to get them? Not really, but it should be something special. Yeah, twenty-five years is a long time. It would be nice to get something silver. Yeah, well, why don't we club together and get something from both of us? Then we can afford something really nice. Good idea. Mum and Dad would love that. Five. Right, left at the next crossroads. What? Left or right? I said left. Right? What? Ah! Ah, oh, that was close. Now left up that hill and look in your mirrors, not at me. Right? Ten point four. What went wrong? Rick. Alex, you're back. Did you and Hannah have a good time? Really? What on earth happened? I bet you were furious with her. That's the one thing you do need to travel these days. Did you go back to get it?
By four hours? That's a long time. Were things OK when you finally took off? I know, my poor sister. Turbulence can be really scary. Hannah must have been terrified. So, did things get better when you landed? You poor things. No sleep after that nightmare journey. Didn't you complain? Three o'clock. Were things any better the next day? So, even the weather was awful. Sorry, Alex, but Leah and I were much luckier in Spain. We had cloudless skies every day. What? No sun at all? Just wind and rain? You're kidding. You must have been so glad to get home and go back to work. 10.5 What went wrong? Rick and Alex Alex, you're back! Did you and Hannah have a good time? <laughs> it was the worst holiday ever. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Really? What on earth happened? Well, it began in the taxi on the way to the airport when Hannah realised she'd left her passport on the kitchen table. I bet you were furious with her. That's the one thing you do need to travel these days. Did you go back to get it? Yes, of course, we had to. Oh, it was a mad rush. But we needn't have hurried because when we finally got to the airport, the plane was delayed by four hours. By four hours? That's a long time. Were things OK when you finally took off? No, things got even worse. The flight was a nightmare, a really bumpy ride, and Hannah is afraid of flying at the best of times. I know, my poor sister. Turbulence can be really scary. Hannah must have been terrified. So, did things get better when you landed? <laughs> I wish. It was dark when we arrived at the hotel and we were exhausted. So, we went straight to bed, but we couldn't sleep. There was a party or something going on in the room next door and the walls were paper thin. You poor things. No sleep after that nightmare journey. Didn't you complain? Yeah, we banged on the walls but they couldn't hear. Finally, we rang the hotel reception and they gave us a different room. But by that time it was three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock? Were things any better the next day? Well, in the morning we opened the curtains and guess what? It was raining! Oh, not what you expect in Bermuda. So, even the weather was awful. Sorry, Alex, but Leah and I were much luckier in Spain. We had cloudless skies every day. Oh, yeah, and it continued to rain for the rest of the week. Apparently, it was the tail end of Hurricane Gonzalo. Oh, just our luck. What? No sun at all? Just wind and rain? Uh, not exactly. The sun finally came out as we were travelling to the airport to come home. You're kidding. You must have been so glad to get home and go back to work. 10.6 Might have Could have Can't have May have must have. 10.7 You must have been worried. I can't have lost it. It could have been stolen. I might have dropped it. She may have found it. 10.8 What on earth? What on earth has happened? How on earth could that have happened? Where on earth have you been? 10.9 A I can't carry all these shopping bags. What on earth have you bought? B Tom's broken his arm in three places. How on earth did he do that? C. There's someone at the door. 
Who on earth could it be at this time of night? D. My aunt left all her money to a cat's home. Why on earth did she do that? E. I can't find my car keys. Where on earth have you put them? 10.10 10. My Solo Wedding I lie awake in my hotel room in Kyoto, nearly 6,000 miles from home, my stomach in knots. My mind is racing with thoughts of my wedding tomorrow. I take a deep breath and tell myself I don't have anything to worry about. I can't be stood up at the altar because the person I'm marrying is myself. 10.11 the man who posted himself to Australia. We first met in the 62 Commonwealth Games that were held in Perth, Australia, and we immediately got on. We just hit it off. And both very accomplished athletes, national champions, record holders at the Javelin. <laughs> you know, we'd built up a friendship in Australia and we wrote to each other. People wrote letters in those days. <laughs> and then there's a knock, knock, knock on my door and it's Reg. He was over... And fortunately, I was able to, to put him up and he stayed for well, about four or five months. But as you say, Reg, you got injured and you wanted no. to get home to see you, yeah. you were married yeah. by now. You had a little girl. Yeah. You wanted yeah, to get yeah. home um, for her birthday. And there was one catch. I didn't have any money. <laughs> Reg, after a little while, got a job and he was um, earning some money <laughs> at the airport. So while he was working there, he was saving up to go home and then he had his wallet pinched. So I had to find another way home. So where, where did this idea come from to disguise you as air freight? Oh, I worked for Air France and I worked in the export cargo section. So I saw animals coming through on aircraft and it just came to me. I thought, well, wait a minute. Hang on a minute. <laughs> the biggest piece of freight you could put on an aircraft to go to Australia was, I remember, five feet by three feet by two and a half feet. That was the biggest that the plane could take. But you thought, I know, I'll get in a box and send myself home to Australia. Why not? <laughs> and I was in a hurry. <laughs> John, what did you think when you heard this idea? Well, when he first came back with this idea, we thought, you know, he was joking and, and so on. But there was an intensity about it. And uh, we thought, God, this guy's serious. So if he's going to do it, I better make him a box. So how did you go about <laughs> making this box, John? He told me it's got to be five feet by three feet by two and a half because Reg is about six foot two, well built and handsome and all that sort of thing. So five feet by three feet by two and a half allows him to sit up with his legs straight or lie back with his legs bent. Where did you make this box, John? Uh, made it largely largely in the flat, but we found that um, looking at it in, in the light, in certain light, you could actually see through the cracks. So we had to line the inside of it with uh, some paper because he, he, he actually went as plastic emulsion. That's what was written on the box, was it? Plastic that, emulsion. That's what was written on the box to be sent to a, a Mr. Graham and collected. We made up the company... Uh, fictitious address in London, fictitious address in Perth. Was your family in Australia aware of this plan, Reg? No. No, 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 no. No, I wouldn't, wouldn't, no they'd worry. So the big day came, a Saturday yeah. in West London. Tell us what happened that day. How did you prepare, Reg? How do, you, how do you prepare? You don't prepare. You just get in the box and go. John, <laughs> well, when Reg is getting into this box, what have you put in there for supplies for him? For supplies? Well, he's, he's got a couple of plastic bottles, you know, one to pee in and one to drink. He's got, you know, various food items. Mainly baked beans. Probably not a good move. And then... <laughs> There's a thought. Um, he's got his bag. He's got a torch. Pillow and a blanket. Were you strapped in there, Reg? Well, there were straps in there, yes. Yeah. If they turned the box upside down, which they did one time, it all held me in place. Now, Reg had an enormous appetite, so we had to... Slow his system down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't eat for weeks. Literally, you didn't eat for a week? No, I didn't eat for a week. It was very, it, it, well, I was young. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was it. He was off. So what's going on with this box that you're in, Reg, while you're waiting for the plane to take off? I, I can see out of through the slats, and they had a huge freight shed. 
and they took the, the, the crate in there and they put it up high. Oh dear. And then out to the aeroplane, see you later. Simple as that. It was pitch black most of the way. It was about 60 hours in the thing. What were you thinking about in there? My life up to that point, you know. All sorts of thoughts go through him. But I wasn't frightened. I'm up here. Everything's working. I'm breathing. I'm not cold. It's not that comfortable, but I can make it. So I just carried on. So next leg was to Bombay. Bombay. And it's so hot. I've taken all my clothes off. You know, I think it went to Singapore. And then I think it went to Perth. I knew when it hit Perth. The hold opened up. These, uh, these Aussie guys come in and said, this big so-and-so thing, this is not for us, is it? And they, yeah, it's for us. I knew where I was. I'm home. How did that feel to be back in Australia? Oh, it was terrific. Wonderful. Did you make it in time for your daughter's birthday? Yeah. And your wife? She was happy to see me, of course. What did she say when you told her how you'd got home? She didn't believe me. <laughs> she didn't believe it. But then she thought about it for a moment and thought, well, well yes, the silly, uh, the silly man has done just that. 10.12 I've just found out. 1. I've just found out that my sister's expecting a baby. That's fantastic. When's it due? 2. I don't ever fall out with my wife. What? Never? You're kidding. I don't believe it. 3. I can't work out if I feel warm or cold today. Yeah, it's one of those days. Four. I'm saving up to take my grandparents on holiday. That's kind. They must be delighted. Five. I need to sort out my life. I've got problems at work and I've got problems with my boyfriend. Poor you. Come on, let's go out for a drink. Take your mind off things. 6. I've just come up with a fantastic idea. Er, uh, I'll believe it when I hear it. 7. I'm going to take up rock climbing. I need a new hobby. Are you mad? You feel dizzy climbing a stepladder. 8. It's important to make up after an argument. Yeah, kiss and make up. Never let the sun go down on an argument. 10.13 Have you read about this girl? Have you read about this girl? Which girl? An American girl. Apparently, she's just had a solo wedding. A solo wedding? What on earth is that? Well, <laughs> incredibly, it means you get married all by yourself. <laughs> You're kidding? Do you mean there's no groom, no husband? Exactly. Where was this? I bet it was in California. No, no, it wasn't. In fact, it was in Japan, in Kyoto. Apparently, solo weddings are becoming quite popular there. Really? Why? Surely it's a really sad thing to do. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree. But it says here some girls just enjoy dressing up and being a princess for the day. Oh, oh dear. Presumably, these girls don't have boyfriends. <laughs> Obviously not. I don't think any boyfriend would like the idea. <laughs> well, personally, I think the whole thing is silly. Mm, I know. And anyway, I like the way we got married. It was good fun. Yeah, it was. And romantic. Why did the American girl do it? Uh, she's a photographer oh, and a journalist. She must have just wanted the story. <laughs> Of course, and it's a good one. 10.14 Expressing Attitude 1. Hi, you're Pete, aren't you? Actually, no, I'm not. Pete's over there, talking to Robert. 2. What did you think of the film? Great, wasn't it? Personally, I thought it was rubbish. I just don't like all that blood and fighting. 3. What's the latest gossip about Kate and her boyfriend? 
Apparently, she's going to dump him. She's met someone else. Four. What's the weather like in spring? Generally, it's warm during the day, but you still need to wear a jumper or cardigan in the evening. Five. What time will we arrive? Hopefully in the next hour, unless there's another traffic jam. Six. I phoned and left messages for them, but no reply. Presumably they're away on holiday. Try them on their mobile. Seven. What did you do when you saw the accident? Obviously we called 999 immediately, then went to see if we could do anything to help. Eight. How did you feel when they offered you the job? To be honest, I was amazed. I didn't expect to get it, but of course I was delighted. It'll be a challenge.